Jake got my raised bed, my second raised bed, finished yesterday, and now it's time to plan it. Now, this is right next to the tree, so it's gonna be slightly shaded, so the corner of the garden that's kind of under the tree. I'm gonna plant my winter squash, and then I've got some zucchini and pumpkin and some melon, summer squash. And what we're gonna do is plant them on the side, and then we're gonna put a trellis, a big kind of hoop house looking thing, so they can vine up over it and provide hopefully enough space for them. I don't know, this is all experiment for us, so we'll see how it turns out. Okay, I want to plant, hang on, hang on. I'm gonna plant my winter squash first. Okay, we're gonna do summer squash. Don't take them all, just take one at a time. Here, Eli. dinosaur in here. I want to plant these in a pot. I don't know what to do with these things. You need to plant your sunflowers. Now I'm gonna plant these eight ball zucchini in a pot and I'll put a trellis on it so it can grow vertically. We'll try this out. Eli wants to plant some sunflowers, make a little bed for it, kind of like what I did over in the chicken run and get those planted for him so he could have some sunflowers this, this summer. It's a hot one. All right, so this bee box thing, I've been moving at this real slow, mostly because each Part takes different, well, like this one, for example, this end piece, it needed a router. I don't have a router. Uh, these walls needed a, a slot for the bees to come in and out of. That required a router. So I've got the ends. I've got the, the four sides done. I've got the bottom done. I need to build the top. I've got the some two by fours I need to rip, I think, where you slice them in half uh, all the way down to make them thinner, and then I'll put those together. So I've only got an hour. I've got to run to work here in a little bit. But I need to get these done and in place this week. It's been over a month since I started this project, and I still have the ones that I made with the pallet over here. I'm still gonna figure out how, how to, to put those together. It's a little bit different since they are a little wider and I can't fit the lid over top of those. But I'm gonna work on that too, because I'd like people to have the option to use pallet wood if they want to. But I end up having to build these out of some plywood just to build. I've got supplies basically to make six of them and then I'll have some leftover sides so I could make even four more if I got another piece of plywood. So let's get the six built. Hopefully this week we'll get them put out in place in some trees and I'll get the frame. The frames are gonna be the biggest challenge because it requires some special cuts and some wire in there for them to start building on. So, but I at least want bees to start finding these boxes. So. And again, if I didn't mention, all of these plans are on horizontalhive.com. They are, it is not my design. It is not my idea. It's all from Dr. Leo Sharashkin that I met earlier this year. Love his plans to put out bait boxes to catch wild bees, and then we'll transfer them into our own hive once we catch the bees. So we've got one box built up, pretty sweet. I just need to get the lid built and put it together. The only mistake that I can see so far, the slot. I thought this board went that way, and so I thought that was gonna be at the bottom. I miscalculated or didn't pay attention to it. Hopefully it doesn't matter for bees. Hopefully they can get in and out of that, but that's where we cut all the holes, so that's where we're leaving it. If these all mess up this year, then next time I'll be sure to get that right. Looks pretty cool. Now I just need to build the top and then some frames that'll sit on there and hang down there for them to start building. The moment of truth. Let's see if this lid will fit. Not even close. What did I do wrong? 
Okay, I did it. I probably was supposed to put these to the outside. Well, I'm running late. That's all I have time for today. I thought I was gonna get one box done, but I have to work again tomorrow. I started. They're doing really good. I'm really surprised because I thought there was going to be enough sun up here, but they're growing better here than anywhere else in the yard. So I'm going to plant some more. It's going to probably work its way up, but I'm hoping it eventually just hang down. And these are that sugar snap peas. for the day. What do you think? <laughs> yep. So it's been a while, so we thought we'd give you an update on a couple things that are going around on our farm. First would be our turkey, our Tom turkey, Sir Lancelot. He's still mean. <laughs> we separated him out from the rest of the flock just because he was getting so protective. We would get in there just to water and to feed the chickens and he would attack us. And it was really scary because he's a big bird. So we separated him out and so he's kind of calmed down. He has learned his place a little bit, but I don't know if we're gonna put him back in with the flock. So he's still in the chicken run and he's doing good in there. He hates it, but we just can't take a chance of him attacking one of us or the kids. I still don't kind of trust him, but he seems to kind of mind his own business now since that he separated out from the main flock. I know he's doing what he's supposed to, protecting the flock, but it's really scary when he's going after us when we're just trying to take care of everybody. So we just can't chance him hurting one of us especially the kids. I just hate to keep him out here by himself, but my kids are more important than some turkeys, so. Another update on the broody hens. We have three. We have one that's raising a chick that we hatched out a while ago. She had three, she's down to one now. And the second one, she's the one that hatched out the ducklings so she's got three ducklings and she's doing really good with them and then we've got one that adopted I think six or seven hatchery chicks um, three of them being uh, turkeys so that's really fun to see how she's taken to them she's protecting them they're all in the same kind of area and I'll show you them and see how they're doing they're doing really good I'm really surprised that this worked out. It's too bad that we couldn't get all of our chicks that we got from the hatchery under a broody hen, but at least one of them took them and is taking care of some of them, and the other ones are in the brooder, so they're kind of separated out. So let's go see each one of those and see how they're all doing. So there's Dove and her little baby chick. I can't remember how when she hatched her out, but she's the oldest chick we've got. And there's Leona and she has hatched some chicks out for us before. So we knew we could trust her on raising some ducklings. And she's doing really well with them. We weren't sure how she would take to them since they're not chicks, but she is a good mom. It's funny because I've noticed these ducks kind of hanging out here. They can see in here and I think she is interested in these little baby ducklings. She'll sit here and come over and check on them. And then there's our third little mama. 
she's a little mean. She's a little feisty. So I don't know how close I, we can get to the chicks, but she's the one that has three turkeys and some chicks. I think seven total is in there. So the process what we went through introducing the broody hen to the hatchery chicks is that we brought them home from the hatchery uh, chick days. We immediately went out and it was probably around five o'clock and went to the nesting box that she was sitting in and not sure if she had any eggs underneath her or if she did, we took the eggs out and slid each chicken underneath her and just kind of let her go. And then when it was about time to shut up the coop for the evening, about nine o'clock or so, we moved them out to the brooder so the chicks could get some food and water since they hadn't had any all day. And then she can understand those are her baby chicks. And then in the morning, we put her and the chicks out here in this uh, little chicken coop and shut the door down so she'd have another day to get used to these chicks are mine and have some ownership over them and then I open the door that next day and so she's been roaming free the chicks are going in and out getting water food they get to scratch around and be regular chicks and she's showing how to do it so it's been really neat to see how chickens will take care of young that are not even theirs I know they will sit and hatch out any pretty much any eggs but to see a chicken raised ducklings and to see a chicken raise turkeys and chickens that are not even hers that she had taken the time to hatch out it's really cool I didn't know this would work out but it's worked out great and it's been a really good learning process for us all all right so these are the last chicks we've got these are the ones that are in the brooder we tried with two other broody hens to see if they would adopt these chicks but we went out there later and checked in and their chicks were just running around. They had left the nesting box, probably just didn't understand what was going on. I didn't hatch these chicks out. That's all right, one worked out. The other ones we put in the brooder just to keep them all warm. We didn't think one hen could take care of all these chicks. We ended up getting a lot of chicks. So they're out here doing the traditional method of what we usually do with our hatchery chicks. And they are doing great. We've only lost one. All right, so that's it for the chicks and the turkey. But I think that's it for the day. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll catch you next time.